Hello everyone, this is Leif Spork. This is going to be a YouTube video, but here I am in Hagesund, Norway, and I'm, I'm at this very um, significant Viking burial mo uh, monument and site of, a, of, uh, of the burial of King Harald uh, Harfagen. King Harald Harfagen, who was a you know, Viking king uh, in this area of Norway. He was uh, the son of a chieftain's. I believe he must have became a chieftain himself. Um, I, uh, my grandfather's from Tron time, so I have a very good understanding of the um, King Olav and the, uh, the Nidaros Cathedral, and the whole story of how he, uh, you know, brought Christianity to that part of Norway. Here I am in another part of Norway. Same kind of thing happened. Um, I must say this is one of the most, one of the nicest uh, Viking monuments I have seen. This was created in 1872. We're right on the sea here. Right there, you can. Right there on top of that mound, there's a Christian cross dated from the 13th century. Stone cross, it's really cool. Um, maybe I'll run over there. I don't want to make this video too long. But, um, so. I guess what I, what I wanted to talk about a little bit here is, um,. Being here, first of all, on this site is an amazing experience. Um, it's not like watching TV. It's not like reading about it in a book. When you're actually here, you can smell the sea. You can hear the sheep down here. You can see all the houses. Um, if you know anything about these Viking sites, you learn about how many of these different mounds and things around here in burial sites, many times the mounds would be additional burial or locations so so when you look around you just you just see kind of possibilities of where foundations of buildings were it gives you a sense of what was here the village here it makes you imagine what it was like without all these houses here without the road just to see the sounds of the sea seagulls and the, and the sea out there ships were probably Viking ships would probably be parked on the shoreline and then imagine um, you know, this King Harold is from 933, uh, you know, right in the middle of the Viking period. He wanted to establish a peaceful, more peaceful Norway. I read down there that he wanted to create unified Norway. Um, the pagans, uh, I mean, it, it, you, have, you have to imagine, it. you know, once the Vikings became what they were, I don't know what they were considered before the Vikings. I'm sure they were still very tribal. Could be violent. Could be very... Um, exploring, conquering other police, other places. But in the 900s, 7, 8, 900s, up to about the 1100s, the Vikings, you know, ruled Northern Europe, much of you know, England. Either, you know, they, they even went into... Other parts of Europe, France, has been there's things that happened there, and and um, I'm not going to get into all the history of the Vikings right now, but um, so when you're here <clears throat> and you see the Christian cross up there, and you can imagine when you when you think about the map of Norway, ships coming up the coast, and this is a spot where they would stop, and if <clears throat> if there was no Christian cross there, and if this was known to be, um the land of the Vikings, I mean, you'd have to have been scared out of your mind or, or, or know whether or not you're at the right place. So you can see why and you can understand why the Christian, Christian cross needed to be established. Um, it uh, would help make people come here, live here, trade here. They wouldn't be afraid to stop. So when you're actually here, standing here, it's really amazing. You can really um, understand that a lot better. Next thing I want to talk about is, des is design work. You see on here, this is this monument is from 1872. This design here is from 1872. And yesterday people were talking, uh, someone mentioned about, I took a picture of a military patch, a patch on a, mili uh, a military personnel's arm. And it's, uh, it had to do with, you know, had a reindeer on it. And, and uh, I said I might make a tile out of that. And um, someone said, uh, you know, they thought it was a neat patch, and, and there's so much art out there. 
that you can design from or design with. And you know, when I, um, you know, at some point in your life, when when an information is, is when people say stuff to you, especially with Facebook now and social media, um, you, the, the, everything kind of comes at you twofold. One part of you think about how it's a good idea, and then the other part of you thinks about all the problems that can come with that. And you have to think about the problems that can come with that, because if you don't, if you if you if you don't think about the problems, then then you're going to be faced to have to deal with them occasionally. So you have to learn how to deal with them. So you have to be prepared. So so you automatically think about the problem, because that's what you have to be prepared for. And uh, in a perfect world, I guess you you wouldn't have to be prepared for it. You could just say get out of here I don't want to talk to you I don't care if you don't agree with me but sometimes you have to talk about it so you know some people might not think that it's you're doing really art real art when you're making art from someone else's artwork and I completely disagree with you and, and um, I'm gonna explain why um, today's a national holiday here in Norway okay art art is anything Art is anything you want to create in a way. Um, it can be a painting. It can be a, a it can be a carving in stone. You know, it can it can even be a book. You know, the Bible could be considered a work of art. You know, through history, the Bible has been recreated over and over again. It's it, it's probably pretty close to its original writings, the Old Testament, the New Testament, but it's been rewritten, and it needs to be the same to tell the story. So, so many times it's my job as the artist to tell the story, and 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 to recreate the art from the past to um, make that story continue on. Now if I alter this art and make it different and something that it's not, then that can change the story and make it and, and change the whole understanding of everything. So uh, my job as an artist is, is to um, tell the story in a way. And for instance, on this Viking ship, which I want to make a tile of now, if I were to put like a bird's tail on here instead of a serpent, a serpent's snake-like tail, and if that, that would, if, that, if I were to put, let's say, a, an alien head on there instead of a dragon, it would change what it meant. It would change the feeling of it. And no, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. It, I'm not saying that as an artist you could have fun and put an alien's head on the front of a dragon on the front of a Viking ship. But you have, but in my opinion, you need to you need to keep the original. Um, the same, and and I think for me, I I, I want to continue that tradition, the original, and then once I feel like I've accomplished that, then I can have more fun with it, maybe. Then I can do some fun things with it. But as but when you look at the body of my work, you always go back to that original. You see what you see what where it came from, and then you can see as I, how I progressed and was inspired in other ways to create my own. Same kind of thing here. So, that original art, the stuff that's created from the, from the, the, as far back as possible, uh, it's it's important because that that establishes the originality of it all, uh, the the point of origin. If that's forgotten, it can um, alter the story in a way, and, and the story needs to be remembered. So that's what I wanted to say about that. And again, if you ever come to Norway, come to Hagasund. And check out this monument and the Cursing Cross, and you'll see it's just this is an amazing place to to um, spend a, spend a little time.